shop um, to order. And we will start with A, a discussion of matters regarding the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget preparation, including but not limited to, one, the general fund revenue and expenditures, two, priorities and goals, and last, three, other items needing council direction. And Tina, I think you're on, girl. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, so the purpose of this workshop is, of course, to review, review the proposed 2020 budget for the general fund and to give council an opportunity to look at changes to what's proposed for revenue and expenditures, as well as other considerations um, that you'll be able to make. So we'll start out with a very high level summary of the general fund, um, total revenue and total expenditures. You can see total revenues proposed to be up about $1.7 million with expenditures increased by about $400,000. Um, we did uh, provide you with the division level uh, detail schedules and so at this time I'd like for you to pull those out so we can kind of go through that and see if you have any questions on those line items before we move on with the presentation. <coughs> Go back over specifically the property tax, very specifically relative to how many dollars were a uh, uh, dollar increase in property tax versus um, existing property, and then the dollar amount that was all was new property tax, new properties added to the tax roll. So there was a two hundred million dollar increase to assessed valuations, fifty three million. Not one point three, right? 1.3 million dollars is the Making increase sure, to the actual it, revenue, yes. but the increase to the assessed valuations of properties was about 200 million dollars. Um, 53.3 million dollars of that was due to new properties being added to the tax roll. Just want to go back over that because at the last city council meeting we had, there was a discussion about numbers significantly different than that. And so, so I just want to make sure we're clear about how many dollars of increased property tax we had over existing property and how many tax dollars were added to the tax roll. So $200 million, 200 million to existing added to the, property. Yes, to the, uh, about 150 was existing property. $53 million of that was um, for new properties added to the tax roll. That is the valuation of the properties. And of course, that um, in conjunction with the tax rate is what produces the $1.3 million increase in revenue. Correct. Thank you. And then on sales tax, uh, relative to last year, the dollar amount is uh, what percent decrease over projected 2018, 2019 actuals? So for fiscal year 19, we're projecting an ending sales tax revenue amount of $19.7 million. For fiscal year 2020 in this proposed budget, we've included an amount that's actually conservative. It's a 5.5% decrease from what we actually expect to see in the current year and the amount of almost $1.1 million. And the amount that we are proposing for this year is $18.6 million. That's okay. what's been included in this current budget that we're proposing. Okay. Does anyone from council have questions as it relates to the property tax dollars and or the sales tax dollars being projected at this point for the 2019-2020 budget? Okay, with no questions, move on to your alcohol and bingo tax. Alcohol and bingo tax, we're seeing a slight uptick in that in the current year, and so we are projecting that up a little bit at uh, $18,800. <clears throat> And that's based on uh, projected current year actuals. In your franchise tax? Franchise tax, we're projecting up $81,000. Um, that's in conjunction with increases sales, uh, sales tax, uh, excuse me, water sales and sewer sales because they also pay per a percentage of franchise to the general fund. And what about the other franchise fees? There are franchise fees for television, um, telephone, Gas, of course, Atmos, we saw an increase in that in this last fiscal year. Um, electricity, so. Able. Yeah, but the bulk of it is due to the increase in water and sewer sales. All right, so if we're taking a look at the Atmos increase fees um, based off of what they're asking for, how did we plan the dollar amount for this budget on Atmos? And the same thing based off of the new um, Texas legislative session, the changes that 
um, could occur in the cable television telephone. So we did reach out to Sudden Link and um, requested some information from them. They um, indicated that they are actually not paying us telecom fees based on some federal legislation, so we don't expect to see any impact from that legislation that passed at the state level. All right, so those numbers are basically flat then to what has been. Yes, ma'am. Cable television. Yes, for those telephone. we usually use a, a five back a five year trend look back yeah. and try to base it off off of those numbers. Could we jump back up just a minute on the alcohol and bingo tax relative to this year's actual as of today? What would you what is the alcohol beverage trend line? It's growing slightly um, year to day as of the end of July. We were at four hundred thousand um, dollars, and so we're projecting it to be up about I think twenty five thousand dollars from that by the end of the year. And so we are basing next year's proposed budget on those numbers. So plan and flat on those numbers basically because you're flat, but 000. slightly up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then on our charges for services, would you go through all of the items that are inclusive? in that line item. Yes. So the changes in charges for services uh, has increased due to ambulance fee revenue. Um, of course, municipal court, we saw a decrease there because of legislation. Um, <clears throat> so those are the two big changes in the the public safety area of charges for services. So primarily ambulance. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so primary ambulance services being yes. So uh, municipal court revenue was down uh, three hundred seventy thousand dollars. Oh, let's talk about that. Why would that be? Yes, if we can, do you want to go through these sheets, Mayor, that we handed out to you, the schedules? That way you can see right in front of you the numbers that I'm talking about. <clears throat> that would be your general fund. It says general fund schedule of revenues on the first page. All right, but that's a huge so In that decrease. far right column, yes, ma'am, that shows all of your increases and decreases that we are proposing in the current budget for all 2020. Right, let's talk about a decrease of 368000 Explanation. We do have Melanie here with us as well as she can actually come up and talk a little bit about that. Uh, we are seeing and projecting as far as the uh, on our fees, um, the ticket writing uh, is one of those. But Melanie, I'm, I'm sure there's others you'd like to discuss. So. Good morning. I'm Melanie Wright, Director of Municipal Court. Uh, we do project a, a decrease in revenue for the upcoming year. Mainly, there, there is a decrease in um, filing of charges. In what charges? Filing of charges. Filing charges, ticket yes, writing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, currently, if you wanted to compare through July on this fiscal year to July of last fiscal year, we are down approximately 5,200 citations. 5,200? Yes, ma'am. And the explanation for that would be? That I don't know. That would have to be a law enforcement question. Um, we also have some state mandated changes uh, from last legislative session that have affected charges that are filed in the court. For example, some of the juvenile offenses that used to exist are no longer filed in our court, things of that nature. So um, in addition to the decline in citations, we've also had a decline in some of the criminal offenses due to legislative changes. Give an example of one. Uh, failed to attend school. Um, that is no longer filed at municipal court. Uh, used to be, and we used to file, I don't know off the top of my head how many of those citations, but that was a, a drastic change for the court. Those are now no longer filed at the municipal court level. That's a big number to swallow, $368,000. Yes, ma'am. Has there been any corresponding decrease in expense that we would, have would decreased have our expenditures that? as well? Um, unfortunately, um, it still requires 
so many dollars to operate the court. Uh, even though there is a decline in the number of charges filed, state mandates have increased the workload in how we handle a lot of these cases. So uh, there is still there's still a lot of work involved and a lot of expenditures involved as far as processing summonses and notices and collection efforts that we're required to do now and that type of thing that even though there's a decline in charges, there's an increase in workloads, so the court is still operating basically at a the same rate of, of workload, I guess you could say, that we have in years previous. Just, yes, one second. Tina wanted to say something. I wanted first. to answer Tommy's question. There was a decrease in municipal courts expenditure budget of over $157,000, and that was largely due to turnover and uh, staffing changes. But not relative to number of tickets or charges. Go ahead, Michael. If you look on the third page of that report, you'll get into the expenditures. And in the top section there, the third line down, municipal court, on the far right side, you'll see that uh, I think primarily due to uh, turnover and a little reorg that uh, yes, they and Daniel worked through. Um, uh, they've decreased those expenses. So Tommy, if you were talking about municipal court expenses, they are down a little. Uh, and I think that it's primarily due to that turnover and reorg that they, they worked. We want to make sure that what we're not doing is decreasing the amount of tickets we write because it's an election year or things that can impact um, the function of our police officers because 368,000 is a huge number. Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, the court has nothing to do with the amount of charges that are filed. We're just the venue for those charges to be filed. So um, we, that's not really within our, our control. We want to make sure our city continues to be safe. Yes, ma'am. And that's a key point, Mary. You said safe. It's, it really isn't about the revenues. It really is about making sure that the streets, um, that we do maintain uh, uh, safety on the traffic, you know. So a lot of times it, it does come down to if you pull somebody over, give them a warning, at least that warning will make it safer for the other citizens that uh, uh, won't be affected by maybe somebody running a red light. But that is the goal to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make our streets safer. So. I have further questions or comments from council? Thank you. Would you like me to move on to the next line item? Sure. Okay. So the next line um, is, of course, fire, and that has increased by about $340,000 um, for charges for services, and that's largely due to the increased fees for the ambulance services, as well as a slight increase in run volume. Any questions on that line item? Moving on to public works, um, no changes uh, proposed there for revenue. Um, for public services, there's a slight increase in parks and recreation and uh, a, a very slight increase in the, the Nature Center. Um, for parks, there's a $2,500 increase um, because of reimbursed in expenses. For um, the recreation division, athletic programs caused them to have a slight increase of $6,800 in the Nature Center. Um, had fee increases, which caused them an increase in revenue of $115. So those would be all of the public services revenues that we have charges for services offered. All right, talk through um, recreation down 113000 Are you on the expenditures or the revenues? Oh, expenditures, sorry. I need that's, to go Oh, that's back. okay. Do you want me to move on to that or? Um, no, because I want to go through this a minute. So there's, um, the only increase we see is in recreation in terms of revenue primarily? Primarily, yes ma'am. And that's because of new athletic programs and probably some of their fees that we looked at this year. About $6,800. Questions, comments? With none, move on. Okay, and then we'll move on to the Planning and Development Services section on page two. At the top, slight increase in development services revenue, a 
with a corresponding de slight decrease in planning of about $500. Permits inspections is a big one here that did increase by $106,000 for a revenue projection, and that is largely due to the uh, fees that were reviewed this year and that council approved an increase for. Um, you will also see at the end of our presentation that there is a corresponding expenditure that we're proposing for that increase to revenue. I just wanted to point that out that we will be discussing that later. All right, so uh, you, we're going to discuss later the interest increases and then the, well, the transfers in and out are really not a conversation, so. And you're going to talk about health services increase? In yes, revenues. so. Um, so health services, that $113,000 increase there is actually um, just an, a change in accounting procedure. We used to account for that, those services within our grant fund, Fund 103, um, because that program no longer receives grant funding, we're moving it out to be accounted for within the general fund where it should appropriately be accounted for. So. Good. And then, of course, oh, go yes, ahead. Billy, go ahead. Mayor. Could we back up a minute um, sure. on neighborhood and family <coughs> services, code compliance, an increase in revenue by 56000 What do we attribute that to? Yes, ma'am. That is um, due to a projected increase in abatements because they are hiring two part-time um, officers, so they expect those part-time officers to be able to abate more properties. That will increase the revenue, but you will also later on see a corresponding expense to pay for those two part-time officers. Mayor. And why are the animal services down? I mean, it's not very much, but just explain that. I'll have Mrs. Chegwin come to the podium, please. Morning. Um, our revenue has been on a downward trend uh, for a couple years now, and so it is down not very much, but something that we just wanted to accurately reflect actual data. Uh, we've certainly been over uh, front desk procedures in handling and charging and collecting appropriate fees. Uh, we do feel like that's happening properly, uh, but just there is a decrease in our revenue that um, is, is still just in line with uh, our actual trend. activity. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Good. Okay. So, um, and where it says other departmental charges, 12561 up. That is largely due to uh, reimburse expenses from the, uh, from SAPAC for operating the auditorium. We do charge out their utilities on a pro rata basis. And so we'll see a corresponding um, expenditure increase later on in the budget as well. Right, and your interest projection is conservative and in line with our investment officer's yes, projection. Yes, I have spoken with our in invest investment advisor several times. She's very comfortable with the projections that we're making. We will still continue to monitor that on a monthly basis, and if we start to see any changes, then we will, of course, bring that to your attention. Any further questions on the revenue side of this budget? With none? move on to your expenditures so our first section for expenditures is public safety um, we do have an increase in for the uh, for the police department um, of about three hundred ten thousand dollars and that is due to budgeting for year two of loyalty pay and steps um, for Municipal Corps, again, we discussed that earlier, a decrease of about $157,000, largely due to um, salaries and uh, uh, turnover within that department. Public Safety Communications is down $7,700 because of salaries and turnover. Fire is up $180,000 for their expenditure budget. That is due to uh, the training program that they are offering, which has a, cor a corresponding revenue. Um, to a target increase request for chemical and medical supplies as well as some equipment replacement and for contract services whenever their revenues increase on the amb ambulance side they have a corresponding increase in expense because they do have a billing company that uh, bills those uh, runs out for them and then last in public safety is fire prevention which is budgeted down twenty five thousand dollars due to full-time salaries and turnover within that department okay 
from council? None. Move on to public works. All right. So for the first one in public works would be engineering. That is projected up $85,000, but that is mostly due to a reallocation of salaries that were accounted for uh, in the past. They were charged out directly to some other funds. They're now being accounted for within the general fund. And so it's just moving those expenditures from one fund to the general, from another fund to the general fund. Um, and we are compensating for that somewhat by um, including those costs and services in our indirect cost plan and charging it out that way instead. Okay. Operations admin um, is up $2,900 just due to salaries. Traffic and signal, signal control up about $6,800 also because of salaries. Slight decrease in street and bridge of $1,100. That's it for public works. Questions for Tina on public works? With none, move on to public services. The public services includes parks, which is projected down $30,000 due to salaries and turnover. The water lily garden, which is up $2,600. That's, of course, in line with the contract that we have for the water lily garden. Recreation is projected, well, on this sheet, it's projected down $113,000. But if you'll look uh, down the page at the Nature Center, it's because we've pulled it out into its own line because we want to be able to account for the Nature Center on its own to, to kind of show how much it's supporting itself through its own revenues. Right. And so there's a corresponding increase to that line. <coughs> yep. Yes, please, Lucy. Uh, Tina, can you explain again on the parks? Why were they down? Why are they down so much? Thirty thousand. Oh, you said yes. salaries and what else? Just salaries and turnover. They have a, a hard time filling some of those positions. Okay. And yes, um, Billy. They're not going to plan on trying to hire in the next fiscal year. When they have vacancies, um, as of a certain date, we as, it's April fifteenth to be exact. Um, we budget based on the starting. A range the start of the range for that position and so sometimes that's less if they have turnover than what someone in that position was making at the time does that make sense so they're not yeah. planning on fewer people it's just I think Carl can probably speak a little bit more to what is going on that's that correct department. it's not fewer <coughs> not fewer positions it's we've lost some senior uh, supervisor positions and and filling those positions at a lower level that's the reason okay Thank you, Carl. Any further questions from council? All right, so move on to the next page. At the top of the next page, you should have planning and development services. Um, the first one in that department would be ad administration, which is projected down $5,300 due to uh, decreases in some salaries. Um, planning is up $2,500. Um, because of uh, some increases in salaries there as well. GIS is projected up $35,000. Again, that's due to a reallocation of where the salary was charged. It was charged to another fund. Now it's being accounted for within the general fund. And then permits and inspections is projected down $14,600 due to salaries and benefits. Um, again, just turnover within the division. And that would be it for planning and development services. Good. Move on. Okay. Next up is neighborhood and family services. First line you have there should be code compliance, which is projected up uh, $65,000, uh, mostly due to, as I mentioned earlier, the two part-time employees that will be, or I don't know if they have been hired, but have or will be hired uh, to increase our, our um, abatements. Okay. Okay. Next and line. animal services. Animal services is projected up $17,000. That is because we did regrade those officer positions, <clears throat> excuse me, to be more in line with what our code compliance officers um, have as far as steps and certifications mm -hmm. and things like that. And social services, is that a breakout again? Yes, ma'am. Um, that used to be accounted for in the grant fund and we're pulling it into the general fund because the portion that does not receive grant funding. So legitimately, it's not greater expenditures. It's an issue of fewer grants and looking at it holistically as its own area. Right. So anything that's in the grant fund should technically be receiving grant funding. And so if it's, if it's not, it should be accounted for within the general fund. 
And that is the same answer for nursing and env environmental health, moving a little bit further down the page under the health services. <clears throat> so if we look at it from a holistic perspective, then on the ones with the asterisks, all three of them, the 92,000, the 146, 145,943, and then the 85,000 dollar, those were co-compliant 65, all of those are significantly up, but if you combined them and took out the grant monies received, would we basically be flat to last year's or to our projected this year's expenditures in those categories? So, yeah, holistically, for the entire city, funding-wise, those um, budgets, their targets remain the same. They're just moving from one fund into another fund, and we pulled any um, funding sources that were being transferred over to the other fund are now just staying in the general fund. So it's basically a wash between the two funds. We're just because it's not a grant funded, we can't account for it in a special revenue fund, so it has to be accounted for within the general fund. So that's, it's just a change, but it's not a change in funding level. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I think I jumped ahead on health services and on nursing and environmental health. Those two line items are, as you explained, breaking out. Yes, ma'am. And so then I, we would move on down to general government line yes, items. So go ahead. City Council is projected down $26. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we won't drink so much coffee. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> I'm not booking any overtime. Over there, right? yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, city manager is up $17,000 based on changes in salaries. Um, internal auditor is up $600, again, just salaries. All of these are mostly just salary changes for public information is down $1,600, of course, because of salaries and turnover there. Um, city clerk's office is down almost $10,000 due to salary changes. Construction management is down $4,200 because of salary changes. And then the development corporation is down almost $57,000, but it's not an actual decrease in their expenditure budget. It's because we're now pulling, they used to be accounted for in QuickBooks, accounted for separately outside of our financial software, and this year we are going to pull them back into our financial software. So that's just a change in the charges that we had within our software that we were charging out to them that will now just keep in the fund. So it's not really a change in the overall funding level. Okay. <clears throat> Administrative services. So administrative services, the first two are city attorney and real estate. Those two both have a slight increase in their budgets. I believe that's due to the uh, Westlaw software that they purchased for record keeping and maintenance. Um, finance is projected up $25,000. That's in line with our contract with the Tom Green County Appraisal District. That contract is increased by that amount. Billing um, and collections is up $3,800. That's just changes in personnel. Information technology is up $37,000 um, due to a target increase request for uh, increases to our agreement with HDE or Central Square, which is our financial reporting software. Purchasing is up $11,000, $11,200 because of sal changes in salaries. Human resources is up $126,000 um, due to some software uh, purchases, um, and then also some changes in personnel and way that, that the salaries were being allocated between um, our self-insurance funds and between the general fund. <clears throat> Crossing guards is- You should start to see some savings after these, uh, with the impact of the soft, the um, time clock I believe software. so. Actually, if we want to have Brian Kendrick come up and speak to that, I think sure. he could give you some information. Good morning. Mayor, Council, Morning. Brian Kendrick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that consistently what we heard from uh, Time Clock Plus is that there was a three to six percent payroll decrease uh, related to purchasing that software in other um, other organizations. Uh, now that would not probably affect our um, our salary, but, but more the hourly folks. So it won't be of the total payroll. But yes, we would expect that to affect that greatly. 
Any other questions? Questions from council? No questions from council? We're done. And then moving on, facilities maintenance is um, projected at $5,300. Again, I, in, um, in line with the increased revenues I mentioned earlier related to the auditory and utilities that we're charging out. And then non-departmental is projected down $87,000. Included within non-departmental is tax rebates. We still have one tax rebate agreement with Glaziers for $77,000. We have the transit district um, contract accounted for within that account. And then, of course, civil service leave, leave payouts that we fund. <coughs> Do I have further questions from council? Moving on to transfers out, grants uh, expenditures are decreased by $63,000. That's, of course, just in line with uh, matching for any grants and grant activity. Uh, capital is down $368,000. That's just the part that we transfer out to fund 501 for equipment replacement. And last year's beginning budget, we, of course, allocated some of the sales tax surplus for additional equipment replacement needs. And so we're just taking that back out of the original budget. Um, and then other funds is down $43,000. That includes transfers out for general fund supported um, funds such as Fort Concho, Texas Bank Sports Complex, and Fairmont Cemetery. All right, so in to any questions from council on those line items? With none. All right, so what we have is, generally speaking, General, we have in total general fund revenues an increase of 1664000 over the fiscal 19 original budget. It is, if you'll, on your slide up here, it's 1698000 total in increased revenue and then $394,000 in increase in total expenditure for a net marginal revenue of $1,303,859. Okay. And that's over the original budget, but it's not the number if we looked at where um, in August our year ends in 45 days. So if you're projecting your 18-19 budget, not planned budget, but actual projected budget, what would those numbers look like? We don't have that number in total, Mayor. Just but again, all of these revenue projections are based on, on that Methodology. The original budget. Yes, ma'am. Not on actual. So no, 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 ma'am. We that's what I'm our asking. proposed yes, our proposed twenty twenty budget is based on actuals and um, most of the time we use the last five years, um, an average of the last five years and use that as our basis for projecting what we'll budget for the following year. Okay. So um, it's not just based off an original budget, just no, so we're clear. Yes. Okay. Do I have any further questions for Tina on where we're at right now? Doesn't look like it. Go ahead. So um, just once again, we did um, talk about keeping the property tax rate at 0.776 per $100 valuation. Our FY19 certified valuation came in at almost $5.2 billion, which is a 3.58% increase from the prior year. Um, again, um, new property added to the role was over $53 million of that valuation. And we do budget at a 98% collection rate to be conservative. So if you look at the 3.58% increase from prior year, would you take away the 50, the new property on that and give us a, what the increase percentage was on last year's versus this year's without the new properties? Um, Kimberly can probably calculate yeah. that qu quickly, yeah. but I will tell you that the $53 million in new properties yielded about $400,000 yeah. worth of that $1.3 million increase. Right. Mm. 
Mayor, Mayor, which kind of uh, goes to the importance of, you've been talking a lot about this as far as economic development and what that means to actually bring those new values, um, because it does, it does assist um, uh, in looking at the property tax. We not only look at maintaining the property tax rate, but even there's been talk about reducing that in the, in the near future uh, to well, really, ta the really tackle that. So, yes, yeah. ma'am. Mm -hmm. Because the new regulations are relative to increase over prior year, not new taxes added to the tax roll, right? Yes. And we want to talk about that because we want to make sure with the new regulations that are there, if we take a look at the trend line, it wouldn't initially have a negative impact on us because we would be within the range of what we're limited to in terms of what those increases legally are allowed to be going forward. That's why you're asking for the percentage without yeah. the new valuations. Okay. Yes, because I think... The rule going forward is what 3.5 or 3.6%? It's 3.5. 3.5. Yes. So we just want to talk through that and show that we can still function and offer the same kind of quality public safety within the numbers that this year are forecasted. Not Mayor, maybe forever, but this absolutely. year. Absolutely. But again, that expresses the importance of making sure that we do have those new property values uh, in order for us to tackle the needs that we'll have in the future. Since we will have a 3.5% uh, ceiling, we want to make sure we do everything we can to increase those new values, and that way we have those additional revenues coming in. Absolutely. Because we want to continue to support the public safety issues in Correct. this city, and so we want to make sure that those valuations continue to allow us to do that. All right, so next slide. This is our slide that we show just to show the trend in sales tax collections, um, showing the last five fiscal years. And then moving on to the next slide shows kind of that we're running along the same trend lines with 2015 and 2018, but we're actually seeing increases even above and beyond that. Go ahead, Tom. Is on effect to that? Yes, there is have on been. on effect to your collections there, Tina? Uh, yeah, we have seen a, a, a gradual and continuous increase in dot coms and those online revenues. Well, let me ask, and y'all forgive me for maybe this question. Um, how specific does that get by zip code? I know in the sales industry, Kimberly, this may go to you, you know, sometimes you pay reps on the first three digits of a zip code first four and as those digits expand to a five digit zip code you're more specific so when Amazon pays those or the dot com revenue that we see come in if somebody purchases it at all within the city limits or wants somebody from let's say Wall or Grape Creek does where does that revenue go it should be specifically within city limits so any zip code that is within the city limits should come to the city of San Angelo what about ETJ we would not, I don't think we'd receive any revenues from yeah. the ETG. We're not supposed yeah. to. We right. shouldn't, right. Yeah. Not supposed to, but if it happened. Oh, we don't we? object. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give everybody an 03 zip code. Okay, good. Thank you, Tina. Kimberly. You're welcome. Any other questions from council? Tom, would you like to be annexed? I, I, I'm in. But one of them's not, so yeah. You know somebody that'd like to be annexed. <laughs> Absolutely. Any further questions oh. on, uh-oh. Oh, oh. 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 Timely. Not, yeah, yeah, it yeah. only happened one, one time. time. Oh. <laughs> one time. It's the first time we've ever caught here. Yeah. All right, Tina, go ahead. Okay. So we've already kind of talked about this slide, but again, we're projecting $19.7 million for sales tax revenue, um, proposing a 5.5% decrease from that amount for a difference of almost $1.1 million. And here we have our, oh, what happened to your slide? I hope no one's colorblind, else you'll not understand this slide. <laughs> because it's kind of hard to read what we're looking at up here. Well, it looks like whenever um, it was uploaded, we'd have this ha happen before when we send it to public information. Sometimes when they upload it's Brian's the fault. slide. Yeah, yeah. I'm not blaming Brian. Brian has got a Mac. I blame um, Microsoft for that. Um, but it looks like it didn't pull in the actual names of the ranges so I'm sorry for that but again this slide is just to show that property tax yields 47 percent of our general fund revenue sales tax um, yields about 25 percent of it I'm going on that top graph if you want to follow the colors at least 
uh, franchise and alcohol and bingo tax is 10%, charges for services at 13%, and miscellaneous is 6% of our revenue sources. Um, expenditures by department, public safety includes 55% of our expenditures, public works at 13%, um, public services at 6%, and then other at 24%. And then expenses by type, just under 70%, 69.97% um, is related to um, personnel expenditures. O&M yields uh, are, is 23% of expenditures, and then transfers is about 4%. Transfers aren't a revenue, it's just a shifting of dollars. Right. Between funds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have, Tina, and it's perfectly okay if you don't know this number, but I'm going to ask it. Um, relative to our budgeting process and the way we break out, as you just did, the revenue by category. So, for example, um, our property tax represents 47% of our total um, and sales tax, 25%. Do we have um, numbers that, that we don't have to live in other cities, so we don't worry about other cities, but I would assume our numbers are pretty much in line with what most cities have? Actually, a lot of cities will see a much larger both property tax and sales tax revenue, depending on the well, size. total dollars, but as a relationship as a percentage. A lot of cities have um, a higher percentage of sales tax compared with their property tax because they do have that stronger commercial and industrial base mm -hmm. that helps support the property right. tax. Correct. Yep. So that's why we continue to want to grow it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. All right, do I have further questions and or comments on the presentation so far? Nope, keep going. So we're going to move on to uh, some other considerations for the City Council. Um, so we wanted to point out to you that you previously approved uh, police department requests for fiscal year 18 of five additional officers. You also approved five additional officers in 2019 as well as loyalty and pay steps for the police department. Um, in FY20, what's been included already in your proposed budget is $232,000 um, for a total of $709,000 for loyalty and pay steps. And then, of course, we do still have one final year um, of additional steps that will cost about $175,000. And for the fire department, you approved in FY18 eight additional firefighters. And also um, in 19, you approved the first year of the SAFER grant um, for a partial year for that year. Of course, in fiscal year 20, we've included an amount of $148,000 in our pr proposed budget for that program. And then you'll see fiscal years 21 and 22 going to full cost. So those are just automatic additions to the budget as we move forward from year yes, to year. Yes, ma'am, because we know they're already an obligation. We include them before we tell you any marginal revenue that you need to make decisions about. So other considerations that we wanted to discuss with you today uh, include street maintenance and potholes, infill development, river stabilization, development services software, police body cameras, peak hours ambulance, salary adjustments, and health insurance. So we'll go through these one by one and let you ask any questions or have discussion as we go through them. Okay. Okay. So the first one we have up is uh, street maintenance and potholes, and Shane has um, provided us with some slides, and he kind of wants to go through a little, a short discussion with you on that. Right. Council, this kind of based off what Councilman Thomas had asked for uh, two or three weeks ago at one of the prior meetings, uh, City Council meetings, and just kind of wanted to touch base with y'all on everything since we've uh, this has been such a hot topic here lately, and kind of go through some numbers, but just to kind of get everybody kind of up to speed on, on where we are as a city, from a city, when we look at the Street and Bridge Department and what they're responsible for. We have approximately 1,200 lane miles, 1,183 lane miles, and of course a lane mile, one, one mile is a, it's a lot of street. So um, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, it, it is quite a bit. So uh, and then we have, two, we also maintain 223 miles of alleys um, as well. And uh, we do this with uh, a whopping 37 employees. So um, we're, you know we're we're pretty lean in the, in that in that realm. So especially when we look at uh, the labor positions, is 33 management administrative. We have four. Uh, you can see average vacancies since October of last year. We've uh, averaged six vacancies. 
um, and current vacancies right now are at eight. Um, and and again, we're the it's a revolving door over there, especially on the on the entry level employees. So, core services that we have for the for the city, uh, or that this that this uh, division takes care of, not only just is it street and bridge, but as you can see, our our standard stuff: street repair, crack seal, alley repair, curb repair. Um, and then vegetation control, we actually go out and you know spray curb lines and and, and take care of those areas, the me the big medians, uh, the one on Twin Mountain with all the rocks, spray and make sure that we main maintain and manage all the weeds there as best we can. Um, and of course the pothole repair, utility trench repair for water cuts, sewer cuts, those type of things, go back and repair those. Uh, we also take care of the vector control, the mosquito spraying um, and putting out uh, the larvicides all around town. Uh, we also take care of uh, the majority of the illegal dumping that's in town, that's taking place in town. And then also tree trimming when we, when we have site restriction issues as well too. Uh, work with code enforcement on those, uh, try to get compliance with the property owners if we can't, then our crews go in there and take care of that as well too from there. Additional things that this that uh, we get tasked with at Street and Bridge are clean out and secures for the fire marshal's office, uh, for the uh, uh, safety. Uh, issues and then of course the demolitions once once we've uh, they've had an order um, to demo the structure we we take care of that for them uh, and then of course there's there's tons and tons of special requests out there as well too so before you move off that yes Terry uh, just because I have so many boarded buildings and condemned buildings in district we have a number of those demolitions that are waiting because you do not have uh, available personnel to take care of. Right there, there are a there is a ba a huge backlog right now of dangerous buildings or dangerous structures that need to be uh, demolished and, and hauled off, just simply because we have been so far behind the uh, the our curve on on trying to get caught up with not only potholes and trench repairs. And then, of course, uh, as we can see here in a little bit, the the time it took for the tornado cleanup and the and the debris cleanup around town, uh, and as well as, as some of the issues that we had on material acquisition as well too. So, uh, we're just trying to get caught up with streets. Um, the hot, dry weather definitely isn't good on our lakes or on our grass and our yards, but it sure has helped me on the streets get. Well, to add to that, not them, only the tornado, up, but, so. but also the heavy rains that we got last oh, fall yes, season. It, it so, was, I mean, it, that was started the season or the year off with some aggressive It, it really issues. did. So, really not to issues. forget last October. Yeah, yeah, and that's why we kind of brought these numbers from that October time frame. It started raining in late August, September, and, and with all that rain, it started really just uh, making the pothole situation a whole lot worse throughout the city. And so, from there, we... Um, it kind of started bringing these numbers forward from that uh, from from that time frame because that's when we really started the uptick in the pothole repair as well too. So, Jane, how, yes, what kind of backlog Tommy. do you have on potholes? A month, two months? Well, that is with is that question attached? If we get any rainfall, because <laughs> it's relative. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. Oh, so uh, let's, yeah, this. Oh, did I ask the this, right question? This, this slide, yeah, this slide right here kind of, it helps us, it kind of knows what. We have uh, complaints, and this this is based on what was just called into the Street and Bridge office and or emailed in or come through over the city's website, was just, just shy of 200, uh, 2,000 complaints. Uh, we have, um, in that t same time period, October through July, uh, 15, approximately 1,500 uh, temporary patches, which is kind of our throw and go just to fill in the hole to make sure that it's safe enough for people to drive over, not tear up their vehicles as bad. And then we've done over 1,000 permanent patches in that same time period. Um, currently, you know, there's, there's, there's still a huge backlog of the permanent patches, uh, and, and we still see potholes. Uh, they're, they're still popping up, even though it's dry, it's not raining, we're still getting them, we're still get, receiving the complaints. Um, on a daily basis. So um, we're still backlogged, but we are catching up a lot faster. But again, 2,000 complaints and we're only at 1,000 permanent patches. So, um, you know, we, we're we still at 50%. So we've still got a ways to go. A couple of days. Yeah, we've got a couple of days worth of work. And when we look at it uh, and 
you know, just kind of looking at this slide as well, too, you can see some of the other things, trench repairs, uh, 352 work orders have been turned in for trench repairs. Uh, we've completed 305. We still That's have incredible. remaining 47. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good job. And so um, working through those, you can see some of the other major projects that, that this group has completed in amongst all of this, kind of in the same uh, timeline we've had uh, due to all the rains last last fall we had some on the hickory pipeline some of the county roads out in the county that had some collapses under them uh, had some failures so we had to go out and repair those um, uh, we've um, you looking at the Pruitt Drive up there on the north end of Pruitt Drive we completely uh, pulled out and, and uh, reconned rehabbed about 200 200 250 feet of Pruitt Drive uh, to get ready for the seal coat got that seal coating done uh, major repair at 24th and Armstrong. I mean, you can just name we quite a few of these major projects that these guys have tried to complete in that same time frame as well, too. There's some really positive comments on the seal coat projects that are going on right now. Yep. Yeah. 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 Very, we're very and and it's uh and again too we're trying to uh, still working through the still working through that and and the seal coat project going on right now and I've got crews trying to get out in front of them. I know uh, I've had I've, we've taken several phone calls of, of the seal coat contractors paving over or seal coating over potholes that we haven't got out in front of yet but again we will come back we will uh, we will get them and we'll cut them out and we'll put uh, permanent patches in them at, at some point in time we just can't get there before the seal coat crews and we're trying to get out in front of them but there's just with not enough employees going too many different directions so it's, it's kind of what it boils you down know, to them Mayor, they yes, really Tommy. do an amazing job just when you look at those numbers you got 1200 mm -hmm. lane miles you got 33 labor people doing the work that is 30 miles per person that those guys take care of one person on on a, on a street that's unbelievable and that's, and that's, Shane, and that's not, and that's not with, to, with what you have to work with. That yeah. is unbelievable how and, well you do. Yeah. And I that's agree. with the with all the alleys and everything yeah. else as well too yeah. that, that we're that we're having to be challenged with in, in amongst all that. So it's amazing. Good. In good. addition yeah. to the special request. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From this. Time. <laughs> yeah. And that one last slide, Tina, if you can forward that one. I just kind of wanted to, the interruptions or pothole pair. Of course, we had the tornado cleanup, uh, and these guys, not only the street and bridge crews, but the stormwater crews as well, too, uh, just just did um, amazing work. May 18th to June 7th, 20 calendar days. My guys worked 17 days, uh, over 12-hour days, straight through. Uh, we did let them off, have the one holiday weekend off, uh, but other than that, those guys worked straight through. No, they um, for 17 days job. for over 12 yeah. hours we averaged over 12 hours a day so just they did great jobs the 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 stormwater division continued even after that after i pulled the street and bridge guys back off to go back onto the street stormwater even kept on from kept on going from there especially in the bradford neighborhood so uh going there and then also we did have uh due to all the rains and all the moisture uh all the all the processing plants uh that we buy from in this region or general region of texas all the way from uvalde to brownwood uh, here in san angelo uh it was so wet that those guys couldn't make make any mix and so we actually uh, went for almost three weeks without being able to get any mix to fill a pothole with uh, or to do any patching with so we've had some challenges there for a while so but again, this uh, hot, dry weather, it's, again, it's not good for our yards, it's not good for our lakes, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's helped my guys out try to get a little bit caught up on these street issues. So just kind of wanted to give you an update. And Councilman Thomas has asked for it, it's kind of where we are right now. And so well, the, as we're the looking issue forward, is, is it's not that we're ignoring them and it's not that there isn't a huge, big effort and a lot of energy put into addressing the potholes. So no one is ignoring the issue. No one is trying to... Um, ignore citizens' requests. No, needs. they're they're, they're not. It's just you know we there's there's a lot of lot of lot of things within that list for those uh, those people to get done. Those few yeah. people that we have, you know, 33 labor positions. We're short eight right now. Uh, so there's just even fewer people that we have to stretch across all of those many jobs. And so, but again, we're uh, the guys are they're hard at it every every day. So and uh, we, they keep plowing away at it. Well, the turnover in one second, Harry. The turnover in employees should slow down a bit simply because there is a slowdown in terms and a lot of uh, changes in the uh, Permian Basin. So I think we'll see st stabilization of workforce this year, unlike last year where there was just 
Yeah, the uh, last the last two years have been tough higher, on us. and yeah. and now uh, companies are looking at it from a, more of a P and L perspective versus just throw as many people at it as you can. So I think that will stabilize, and as as the employee stabilization happens, you should find yourself in a much better position. So, but uh, again, thank you from all of us for the work and effort that has gone into. It's been a tough year from the rain to the tornado to yes ma'am it, it's been a tough 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 year but the guys they've handled it well and and, I agree. and they, they're they're uh, they're they're staying with it and they, of course it's it, I tell you what 109 degrees it'll hurt you pretty bad out there oh, on, wow. on, a, on a on a blacktop street so somehow 109 <laughs> doesn't even feel hot anymore if you've had all these 107 degree days but it is hot yeah, harry yeah. i just want to say thanks to shane uh for putting this together I think this will answer a lot of citizens' questions. Uh, those people that are taking the opportunity today to watch this, uh, guarantee you they won't quit the phone calls, but it'll at least give the, the citizens an opportunity to say, hey, we know that you will get to it eventually. Here's my pothole today. And I want to make sure citizens understand that every single council member has been very quick to react to their complaints. It's just a matter of how quickly we can get to them because I know every city council member up here has had phone calls relative to potholes and they have addressed it as quickly with you as they can. It's just a matter of how quick we can yeah. get to it. But no, everyone I mean, has yeah, tried hard to communicate. Everybody's very responsive. And, and again, it's just, it, it, we, we get everything on a list and we get to them just as soon as we can get there with them. So, uh, but again, too, we want to encourage uh, our citizens as well to continue to, to let us know where those potholes are. Because again, when I have those employees and they're working on specific <laughs> potholes that have already been turned in, we're not driving the streets every day and we don't see all of them all the time. And so sure. uh, it, it's always good for us to know exactly where they are. Thanks for the great work. Thank you, Shane. What has the materials turned out to? Is it still inconsistent or has it, it leveled it, back out? It, it's starting to level back out. It's still a little inconsistent because everybody was without material for, for three weeks. And so um, it, it's still a little inconsistent, but it, it's getting better. Okay. Uh, we're, we're able to actually keep some on the yard pretty pretty consistently now. Thank you, Shane. Thanks, Shane. Okay, next up for discussion is um, infill development. Mayor, I can yes. give a quick update on this. Um, we have followed up as you requested. Bob Salas has uh, had two, three meetings that he's been part of. I was part of one of those meetings, and uh, the gist of what we've heard is to bump that amount up a little that we had proposed the other day and uh, they uh, in the meeting I was in they emphasized that both prongs of that attempt one financial side and one on the regulatory side both were critical uh, uh, in fact the meeting we were in they said the regulatory side was more important because uh, in the, it's the time factor the uncertainty associated with some of these areas yeah meant that there was great risk there, and they needed to be able to rely on uh, um, predicted requirements when they were early in the project, when they made all their financial commitments. And uh, so uh, John James is working that, and I believe he's already, he had a meeting with uh, his um, uh, development task force, and um, so we are uh, prepared to continue our conversation we started the other day on the financial side. John will let us know when he's ready to uh, bring something to council on the regulatory side. Um, and we'll have, we've got a little more later in the presentation about the financial resources uh, that we would uh, as a, propose as a, the beginning of a discussion about how to fund the financial side. Well, and I want to go back to the numbers that Tina presented earlier with the amount of increased property tax dollars that were added to our budget this year, which are significant. And this infill area is a big part of that because there's a baseline off of land value that is already in the property tax dollars, but there's no structures. And so we have a huge amount of property that is undeveloped in infill area, one lot at a time, not a huge piece at a time, but one lot at a time. And every time we put a new piece, a new building on that property, the city wins. And as you can see from this budget um, presentation, those, 
you know, that's a huge big change in what we're able to do and fund in terms of public safety, um, as well as economic development opportunities because of those increased tax dollars. So we want to keep pushing that opportunity from regulatory, cost money, we got to make sure we're not getting in the way of development, and then making sure that we allow for infill to happen and don't de um, decrease the, the opportunity based off of excessive costs. Well, we'll be seeking your direction um, uh, later on in the presentation when we talk about uh, we've got a little placeholder uh, for some money to fund the financial side. And at that time, we'll be seeking your direction for how quickly you want it brought back. Okay. Thank you very much. Next. Anyway, I should say any questions or comments, you'll ask them it later on the presentation. Okay. Okay. So next up is Riverbank Stabilization, and I believe Rick's prepared to speak a little bit to that. This is an item that, that council, I think, keyed on some last year. You allocated some dollars. We had some hot spots along the river that exist in numerous places. Uh, you allocated some funds for us to address some of those. A couple of those are here near the convention center that, that have been addressed. There's two others that are currently we had to get uh, engineering done for, uh, and those are, are out to bid. Those bids will be back in on the 17th of September. Uh, but basically, it's looking like for the most basic of fix, it's going to cost about $500 per foot. So when you get to those hot spots, you've, you've got an investment. And that's not counting the fact that at the end of the day, we need to stabilize all of the bank, not just the hot spots. So, so they don't become hot spots. Exactly, exactly. So we've got places along the river, and we've got pictures if you all want to see them. But you know, the sidewalks are fixing to fall off. Once a sidewalk falls off, it's this far from the road. So you know, it's more major than just we're stabilizing the river. It's jeopardizing property and roads and, and so forth. But just yeah, I want to make sure we look at the two hot spots, but then look at the areas that could become hot spots. So oh, and, we and don't to cover that. Yes. We have in our inventory after we address those initial immediate ones that were. We did a, a analysis from Johnson Dam from Oaks. Mm -hmm. Oak Street all the way to this bridge here after you pass the convention center on Concho. And I've got 20 hot spots yeah. in that area. And, and if I just assess those at the lowest amount at $500 a foot, now some of those are, if you were going to save trees and so forth, you're going to have to have retaining walls, which are more expensive than $500 a foot. Right. So just initially, you're looking at $800,000 just to address those 20 that we have already documented and identified. So it's bigger than that, but that gives you sort of an idea of what we're... Now, what we try to do is, as any grant dollars come available, then we try to leverage anything that council allocates for us with some grant dollars. Last year, we applied for TCEQ ones. We did not get those, right. but our intent is to keep trying because sometimes we can double those dollars or sometimes even more than that. Well, and once again, the positive thing is we got a lot of rain last year, but that rain created some... Yeah, issues of washing away those hot spots. yeah it really impacted those hot spots so um, i'm glad you've looked at all of those Excellent. and put together a plan for us thank Any you information y'all want we've got it for you okay great next next up for consideration is development service software that would be at an amount of ninety seven thousand dollars for year one um, and I did ask John James to be prepared to speak to the, this one so that he can kind of give you an idea of what kind of upgrades and um, improved efficiencies it would create for the development community. This is important to me because we have put the software in place, but that software, by the time we got it in place, was old. And we need to make sure that we're as customer friendly as possible. And without these upgrades, we're going to end up looking it's not it's going to complicate it not simplify the process and I think this takes time off of um, staff um, and it certainly makes the process faster quicker for projects so uh, this to me is something that is very needed so John uh, and we've we've also seen with the software we have that's one of the things that's helped us reduce uh, commercial plan reviews uh, in half uh, from like 25 days to uh, about 12 or 15 days on average and so this uh, it is helping but as you mentioned uh, the software that we purchased was a one-time purchase 
And so a piece of that software is about to phase out. The company will no longer be supporting it. Uh, and so what this does, it not only up upgrades the software to the newest version, uh, this will uh, include future upgrades. So the, the maintenance fees, as you see, it's a multi-year maintenance fees, will include every time they upgrade the software, we'll get the newest version. So we won't be in the same position five years from now where, okay, now we've also got a five-year-old software. It, it'll be continuously updated. And have you gotten positive feedback from the community um, on this software program? once it was installed? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The folks that are using it, and we're continuing to roll out more pieces of it, uh, but the folks that are using it for commercial plan review particularly uh, have been pleased with it. Uh, it's especially helpful, although our local guys use it as well, but those folks from out of town who are developing here, who may be their engineers in Dallas, the fact that they can submit their plans online, have us review them online and email comments, uh, that's really been helpful. Okay, do I have questions from council? I have one. Yes, Billy. Um, Tina, on the packet that you gave us, is that the increase in the GIS expenditure? No. No, ma'am. That amount has not been included in the proposed budget that you have before you. We'll talk about a funding source and a funding proposal that implements some of these considerations at the end of the presentation. Okay. So none right, of so these none things, of, oh, okay. Billy, okay. are included right. in what has just been presented. These would be over and above what you've seen so early. far. Okay. Do I, so yes, Tom. You know, John, it's, we, we get a lot of material talking about the development of cities, municipalities. A lot of what we see is down off a of blockchain technology. And you read about people that can take departments of 15 or 20 down to three or four just by utilizing and capturing that technology. Granted, it takes three to four years to phase it in. And you wonder, well, I'm displacing 75% of my employees, but I mean, that's going to be the wave of the future with blockchain. Are we even looking at that as some future things? Not at this point. I'm not aware of any, uh, the development, it may not even apply development to review type software that's looking at that. I'm sure these, you know, these companies are probably looking at it, but nothing like that has, uh, has been rolled out into this type of software. But this does save on staff time and, it is, and, and a, development time from the outside in, so... No further questions? Okay, thank you. Next up is um, body cameras for the police department. We, uh, the current proposal we have is at a cost of $1.6 million, um, and we will be proposing an alternate funding source for that in, at the end of the presentation. Um, I don't know if Chief Carter yeah, is, wants to come up and talk about that or... <laughs> Put him on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, morning. Council. Uh, we've been working on this project for about four years now. Uh, so many times uh, you see out there these critical incidents and uh, the departments that didn't have a body camera uh, would have been facing a substantial lawsuit. Um, it's a three-pronged approach, not just the body camera, but it's always the, also the taser, and it's also the video equipment that go in the cars. We currently have 110 mark units at this time. The technology in there dates back to 2003. It's outdated. Um, for the last several years, we've actually been shopping on eBay uh, for parts and cameras uh, to keep these units going. So anyway, uh, September meeting, we'll have an in-depth presentation. Uh, open it up if you have any questions. And we will continue to look for grants, right, for this ongoing? That's, that's correct. We applied for a $500,000 grant at this time for body cameras. Great. Can you touch Do on I, more yeah, of the Lane, taser you portion? Like? Pardon me. Can you touch on more of the taser taser portion of how critical that is on potential lawsuits? Again, there, there's a bunch of features to this, but if several officers respond to a call and a taser is deployed, everybody's camera around there automatically goes off. There's 76 tasers right now that we have deployed in the department. We're probably spending anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars every year replacing those tasers. Uh, with the program, on the third year of the five year, they come back and they replace the tasers, give you brand new tasers. So. How many of our tasers are out of date and would probably not be covered by the company? Every one of them, all seventy-six that are deployed right now. Those dollars are included in this total cost, Chief Carter. That's correct. 
total and cost it would be roughly over, about eighteen hundred dollars a piece. Total cost would be over how many years? Total cost of tasers of th this concept. Everything. This is a one-time cost. It would be if you bought all the tasers that you wanted that's and, all, and the all the body cameras. Cars. The total cost is the one million six six five eight six zero. So that that's back. inclusive. That's correct. We trim that back from one point nine. Um, we only give the officers that are actually making the majority of the contacts, your street officers with the body cams, your detectives right now, we've decided to hold off on to make that cost a little bit more absorbable. Yeah. Okay. Would that be over a few years, though, of payoff? 1.6 is over a five-year period, so roughly $340,000 a year. If you just looked at the body cam or the in-car cameras alone, that system is anywhere from six to $8,000 right now. So just to replace those 110 cameras in the car is roughly 800000 And down the road again and uh, uh, technology in 2003. There's some of those videos that we have in the end car you can't even make out a person 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I have further questions or comments from Chief Carter? Thank you. Great job. Next consideration is, of course, the continuation of a peak hours ambulance. Um, the cost for that would be about $264,000. Um, we are recommending to fund this through the charity care reimbursement um, that we receive annually. Um, that program has been approved to be continued until 2022. Um, if you have any questions on this one for Chief Dunn, I believe he is here as well. Yeah, if he'll come forward, just. Mm -hmm. Morning, Mayor, Council. Good morning. Do I have questions or comments for Chief Dunn? Well, I wanted you to walk up here just to get the exercise, I guess, because <laughs> it's obviously ex, um, explaining it. So, and is there, uh, remind me, in this year's budget, there is a purchase of a new ambulance? Chief? Uh, I believe there is. I think there's two, maybe two in there. For fiscal year 19? Well, this 20. upcoming, up. sorry, or the proposed, 20, we include, 20, yeah, yeah, we 19, include one ambulance every fiscal year. Yeah, to be so replaced. there's one more. Yes, ma'am. Well, those are replaced on a rotating basis, Mayor. Uh, yeah, just court. to make, you know, it's a public meeting. We just yeah. want to make sure everybody understands the process and yep. what's inclusive in a budget. What this is is the manpower to man those and make the ambulance runs. It's not a capital call, call, uh, expense for an ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, those are listed in the capital budget. So that what this is is the to pay the manpower to man that ambulance during that time frame when we make the most runs. Mayor, I would like to point. Yes. I would like to point out as well as far as the ambulance replacements. I mean, the cost has gone up tremendously, hasn't it? As far as replacing an ambulance and the new requirements uh, that we have to meet. They did two years ago. Uh, the Department of Transportation institute mandate new mandates on uh, what has to be on those ambulances and what has to be locked down because w one of the uh, incidents that caused that was that ambulance wreck out by Sterling City. Um, so they instituted new weight requirements and how everything is locked down in the back of the ambulance and it increased the cost of that significantly. Well, about a, close to about $100,000 per ambulance. It nearly doubled the cost of an right. ambulance for us. All right. Yes, Billy. On that last bullet, Chief, I recommend funding with charity care reimbursement. Can you say a little bit more about that? That is the Medicaid supplemental uh, money that we've been getting back from the um, either the uninsured or uh, Medicare, Med Medicaid patients that we haul that the state of Texas reimburses us for. Does it cover the $264,000 cost? We're projecting about $576,000 um, to be received in September of this year. And so that would be over and above the amount that's needed. Last year we used, I believe, the remainder of the reimbursement um, to fund an additional ambulance. And we actually purchased two ambulances in FY19. Thank you. Lane. So this is the third year that we've had the peak ambulance request. Um, with the changes that we've gone through with the fee increases for the ambulance runs, should we be looking at, instead of having this as a consideration every time, just to include that as a budgetary item and include it from now on? What would that, it, it's the, the 263,900, has that increased substantially 
over the past three years for just the overtime? It goes up a little bit at a time because what that is is we how we man that is with, with overtime. They sign up and they come in and they work that shift from nine to six. So what this does is delay putting that seventh ambulance into service, which would cost the city six hundred and something thousand dollars per year. Uh, this keeps us within a range that we're not uh, borderline uh, killing fire trucks all the time to make those ambulances. So basically, this saves the city. If we can continue this till we have to go to a seventh ambulance, it saves the city three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars per year. So the process works. It does. It's a solution um, for now. And again, uh, Lane, I definitely do understand what you're saying, but this is really working at this point. We do meet with the chiefs, uh, the firefighters association representatives, and this is something that's really important to uh, to those officers. And it really is. Doing well, I'm its just job. wondering why why we should always have a consideration item for this when obviously it is working. We just go ahead and include it into the budget and keep it rolling. Well. Sorry, if I'm hit, Tina. The reason that we're pro uh, proposing it this way on an annual basis right now is that we do have that Medicare reimbursement, and so we can use that one-time revenue source rather than using up some of your marginal marginal revenue. And you are able to use the marginal revenue to do other things that you need to do with it. It's easier to see it accounting-wise to make it work. Budgetary. Well, Budgetary-wise, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chief Dunn. Next consideration would be for salary adjustments. Um, the cost of a 2% salary increase across general fund employees would be $873,000. The cost for a 3% increase would be $1.3 million. All right. Um, so, but let's just, regardless of those percentages, what we're really going to be discussing is bottom line a dollar amount because these there will be merit in merit reviews done and within those merit reviews the uh, dollars will fluctuate in terms of percent increase relevant to that merit increase so we're really not saying that everyone would get a two percent increase what we are saying is that this uh, consideration is for an eight hundred seventy three thousand dollar two hundred um, impact to the budget and within that we would end up having the uh, merit raises uh, approach. Yes, ma'am. So the cost of the 2% raise, again, is at 873000 We would ask for council to direct staff to allocate that uh, appropriately um, based on merit raises. So the dollar amount, uh, you're correct, would be set aside for that purpose. Okay. Well, you Tommy. Know, you know, too, Mayor, I've been having some conversations with Brian Kendrick. We have some, I don't know what else to call them, except structural issues within our overall compensation plan over the organization. And if, I agree with you, Mayor, if we would just start allocating a dollar amount for them to use for um, salary increases and let them work out those details rather than us dictating that, I think at some point it would allow Brian, allow HR to begin to address some of these structural issues. So, you know, at, at whatever point we're ready to, do, I, I would, I would be glad to make that motion. Uh, yes, Billy. Tell me what what are you when you say well, structural issues? What we've do got you mean? Uh, just uh, within the classifications, Billy. Um, uh, there are there are some positions that are just out of whack. And it's just one of those things that has happened over time. But councils, and, and this is not reflection on prior councils at all, but when we just, in my opinion, when we just say give a X percent increase, we are, we are really further just um, making that problem worse within those classifications because some of those class, uh, with, within the, the structure, those classifications need to be adjusted more than just with a percentage that we allocate to it. So if we will allow the professionals, in my opinion, to take that dollar, that stated dollar amount and start working within those classifications, they can address those structural issues. So um, the, pr 
problem, as you said, is that at the bottom end or the top end? Well, you know, I really can't answer because when I think you, you can isolate some individual positions and say, you know, some of those may be at the upper end, but some of them may be at the lower end as well, Billy. Um, so, so it's scattered throughout. It, it, I think it's scattered throughout the organization. So if we would just say, it, it makes more sense, in my opinion, to say we allocate this dollar amount, and then they can they can they can work out those details within within the within the uh, confines of of the structure. Well, and we have to assign a dollar amount anyway because sure. yes. the, the budget's dictated by dollars, yeah. not percentages, yes. and so. We have to assign a dollar amount to it, mm -hmm. and then it's within um, the conversations with human resources yes, and upper management in terms of how those dollars are allocated. Mm -hmm. But if you know, those increases probably shouldn't even be up there, it should simply be and that no. they have to be. But it, I understand where you came up with the numbers, but the reality is, is we're going to improve a dollar amount. And within that dollar amount, we need to address all the human resource issues that exist. That's bottom line. And give us this, yeah, Mayor, and I do agree with that. Just give us that opportunity to kind of work through some of those issues to develop what we feel is a structured plan that you know, works for. If the structural mm -hmm. deficit or defect in mm -hmm. some um, cases, it won't be fixed in one year. No, no, no. Yeah. In yeah. one cycle. No, no you just way. So it. it's, yeah. But it's, it's it, Billy, it, it may outlive some of us yeah. on this council. Um, so yes, you know, you're correct. Well, I just, Thank you, Tommy. You know, I don't want to give <laughs> Well, I wasn't really talking about Harry, <laughs> Billy. I, <laughs> I just didn't want to give the impression that all of the structural. No, no. Deficiencies would be addressed in one. Oh no, Chris, because it yeah. probably wouldn't work with two percent to the bottom line or three percent to the bottom line to fix everything. It didn't happen in one year, Billy. Right. It's happened it over time. It, it, it's going to take several years to. As it is on all the issues that you end up dealing with, whether it is maintenance, whether it is capital, whatever it is, and certainly human resources. So what we try to do is do the best we can with the money we have and start to address the issues. That's what we have to do. Yes, Tom? I have no hesitation with taking something and putting it back into the correct department's can hands on how they think it should be appropriately allocated. Because we don't know specifically how each one of those people go. So it's not our job. Yeah, it's by far better decentralized. That's why we have human resources Absolutely. and city managers. Thank you. They work, work through all of those details, and we know they can do it. Okay. So. All right, next. Okay, next up is actually a good story to tell. Health insurance, as you recall at the last meeting, we're projecting a slight decrease to health insurance. Um, we're um, proposing to leave the um, amount that the employee pays for health insurance flat and include a 2% decrease to the city-funded portion of health insurance. And you'll see that again up in, at the end of our presentation where that added to our marginal revenue amount. And that's relevant to the 2% decrease to the presentation we saw last week in City Council, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So this is just kind of to remind you that we'll be introducing our budget ordinance on September 4th and adopting our budget on September 17th. So we do need your direction, as you just mentioned earlier, Mayor, um, from this meeting to bring back a budget for you to adopt. Okay. And here we get to... The calculator sheet, and so we start with marginal revenue of $1.3 million. Um, if we include a 2% across the board um, pay uh, salary increase, those numbers are included there. They'll add up to that $800,000 number that you saw earlier. Uh, health insurance, again, you'll see it added to mar marginal revenue. That's why it's in parentheses, um, uh, 200, just over $200,000. We have included an amount of $200,000 for infill development. Uh, $345,000 for riverbank stabilization, the $97,000 for the software for development services, and um, police body cameras, one third of that $1.6 million is that $330,172. But as we mentioned earlier, we would propose an alternate funding source uh, to fund the purchase of the body cameras. Do we talk about that alternative funding source today, or do we wait? Tell us what I can the issue kind of is. Give well, you an because it's. I think it's hard to sign off on three hundred thirty thousand dollars over the budget or um, under the budget. But you have a source, so let's talk about the source for funding of body cams. 
So um, we do have the settlement proceeds that are now um, housed in one of our bond funds. Uh, we cannot use those proceeds to pay for anything other than public safety equipment or needs. Um, that amount is $1 million. Uh, we have some interest um, income that has fallen to fund balance in both of the public safety bond issues. That equates to just under $300,000. Of course, the, not, these are all funding sources for all of the public safety needs, including the ambulance and peak hours. So I just want to say that to clarify. Um, so $576,000 is what we're, we're projecting for that charity care reimbursement for the fire department. Um, and those are the main funding sources. And that all adds up to just under $1.9 million. Of course, as I said, we wouldn't use it all for the body cameras, but we would propose using some of that amount to um, front load kind of the purchase of the body cameras and then maybe spread the remainder out over the next five years or something like that. Um, if you want to talk about that today, we can, or Mayor, we could bring this back um, in a, a more in-depth presentation to kind of let you see and make decisions based on what the needs are. I want to, um, I'm fine with um, you presenting it at the next meeting and further discussion, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that I'm sure council very much wants to address these body cameras, yeah. the taser issues, et cetera. So there's a desire to support um, those requests. Um, and if we have alternative funding sources to take care of those issues, I think we're all, I'm sure, supportive <laughs> of doing it in that manner. We just want to make sure that we say out loud that the body cams, the tasers are a very important part of what we want to get taken care of at some level um, in this budget cycle. Mayor, I'm going to have May yeah. as well. The PD will be presenting, uh, they'll have a presentation on the body cameras in the first meeting uh, next month. So that would be more appropriate anyway. So that'll allow us to develop some options for city council to consider as far as the funding source moving forward. So we'll be prepared to present that information to city council as well. We don't want to hamper any of our public sure. safety issues so that's an important part and we need to make sure they feel the support of council so would that be the september 4th meeting on that subject it will be the september 4th meeting you'll present a more formalized presentation on the alternative funding for body cams tasers and other public safety needs yes ma'am okay so with that do i have so um, can go we ahead. question yes Tina's, tommy can we make a motion to do that subject to the presentation? How do we make it subject to so I'm not to proposing to include that amount within this proposed budget. Um, so you would be, if you give me direction, it would be to fund everything except the body <coughs> cameras in the proposed budget. And then again, we'll bring back that other item for consideration. And if we need to include some amount in the budget, we can discuss it at that point. But if we can fund it all through other uh, means, then so be it. I'm right, you to make, make that, a motion. I'll make that motion, Mayor. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. And there's a second by Mayor, Harry. We don't need to take a motion. We are, we're not taking okay. a motion. I thought we just said we needed a motion. No, we don't need All a motion. All right, so what uh, Tommy just, is recommending is is that we nod our heads yes <laughs> to everything up there except the body cameras, which we're supporting as a conversation, and we will review it in further depth at September 4th meeting. We have direction, Mayor. That's good. You Thank have you. direction. Yes, ma'am. We're good. Have uh, we looked at funding sources through the state, yes, the we, DOJ? That, I believe Chief Carter indicated earlier that they have applied for a $500,000 He said a $500,000 grant. grant. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned that. All right, with that, do you have the direction that you need to yes, move forward, Tina? Yes, ma'am. All Absolutely. right, so what else do we need to cover today? That's about That's it. That's all I have, Mayor. Again, we'll be bringing that back on September 4th in addition to the budget ordinance. If we have to make any changes to the budget, that will allow us <clears throat> the time to make those changes before the second reading of the budget ordinance on September 17th. And remember that September the 4th is a Wednesday. It is not a Tuesday of next yes. week, so we won't be meeting on the normal Tuesday meeting date. 8.30, September 4th. Everyone have a great Labor Day weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You as well. Wow, thank you.